Let's get started. Right. I want to just jump right in. Okay. M M M A stands for Make Men Masculine Again. What is the history behind M M M A? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Chester here. Today's the first day. We're gonna start documenting. We're gonna make our documentary on Make Men Masculine. Right now, we in the, the neighborhood I was born in, um, in Pickwick Square in PG Maryland, PG County. This is actually my first elementary school I went to, the only elementary school I went to, Thomas Cleggett Elementary School. This is where I met my very first best friend. His name was Abraham Isaiah Ball. We used to sit right over there at the door every single morning. We used to fight, act like we was in Mortal Kombat and everything. And um, but unfortunately, he ain't with us anymore. He was murdered like in 2006, I believe. Uh, so rest in peace to Abraham Ball. Matter of fact, I got my first fight on this field. I was like, <laughs> like seven or eight. Um, fighting over stupid stuff, just like any other kid does. But I'm gonna take you over there, show you the house I was born at, and show you the little neighborhood where my babysitter was and everything. Take it from there. The history started before me. You know, right about <laughs> I mean, I could look at examples of my father. Mm -hmm. It was a great example of being a man and he left a lot of he left a lot of stuff in me that we don't see in men these days. It could be from anything from simply taking care of your kids, treating your woman right, um, taking care of home, and just being being thorough. Right. You know, in everything you do. Yeah. So this is my old neighborhood, Pickwick Square. This is where I was born. This is where I spent a lot of my. Um, Childhood years. So if you look right here, on the screen and porch, I used to go there every single day till I was about, well, 12, till I got out of elementary school. Miss Scott used to watch me, and uh, she passed away last year too, so definitely rest in peace to Miss Scott. That house right there on the corner with the black door, that was the house I was in when I was, when I was born. My sister was like, Five years old, yeah, she was five. I'm gonna say that's where this all originally started because I believe everybody has their own purpose and I believe this is mine. So I can really say that 1982, September 5th in that house, that's where making masculine started. Yeah, so the whole purpose of this whole movement is it's just creating young men again because this generation is pretty much gone away from what it used to be and what it needs to be put back in place. I mean, it goes from men treating the women right, men raising their kids right, men just being men in general, doing exactly what they have to do. Compromising the integrity of the title of being a man, being a father, being a husband, all of that. We've all, we're all capable of making mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes myself. Um, but really what we're trying to do is just raise the awareness of getting back to being who we really are meant to being who we're supposed to be. So I know a lot of people support like Nipsey Hussle and shit like that. And uh, I know Chester supports him. So I know people losing him has motivated them to doing a lot of things. But me, I support people that I personally know, friends that I know. So that's why I picked up two shirts for my dog and I will be ordering more. I will be wearing these in the gym. I will be sporting these out with the J's and things like that. So I'll, I'll get several different colorways, but y'all can reach out to him if you're interested. And uh, what this is, this isn't about a, 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 a transgender or nothing. This ain't none of that kind of stuff. This is just getting back to the origins of, of who you are. Um, so the being masculine part has nothing to do about gender or none of that shit. It's just, it's just, you know, if you're a man, let's get back to being who we are. Possibilities. Um, you know, everybody got their rights to speak their mind. So even when people want to throw this against, it could be offensive to the, the gay community, which I mean, it's going to offend everybody. They offend people as well. 
you know, they got the right to say what they they want to say. We got the right to say, make me mask and leave. So there's no difference from what they're doing. I don't like the way they forcing this, uh, the homosexuality thing on the kids with them dressing the way that they dress and doing things they do. I'm cool with the tight clothes and everything, but the pink and things like that, we masculine men, we supposed to be strong and you know, we not supposed to be soft. It's getting to the point now where men wearing purses and stuff like that and that ain't, that ain't what we was raised on. So things just change, but I would love to see it back where men are masculine again because it's gonna get to a point where the most masculine men are gonna be wearing tight jeans and dressing more like women. They're gonna be sharing the women clothes, man. So hopefully we get back to that point again. Being raised from my father, I'm at the point now, I look at other men, I'm like, what do you mean you can't fix something? What's wrong with you? You can't cook. What do you mean you can't cook? Why, why your wife always cooking? Why can't you wow. get in there and cook? Why, why is she cleaning up? You don't know how to fold laundry? Why are you in the house? Why are you sitting down? Yeah. Why at 7 o'clock in the 7 o'clock a.m. you still in the bed? Making men masculine again is a, is a, is a hell of a movement because, you know, it's a lot of uh, a lack of it out here, and you know we're just trying to bring things full circle. You know, teach our kids. You know, uh, it takes a whole village to teach kids. So we we're trying to teach them, you know, how to be men out here because there's a lack of, you know, role models is willing to take that uh, path to teach them and all that. So we out here just you know teaching kids stocks, teaching kids game how to be in, you know, just better men growing up. And we also teaching men. How to be men again, cause some of y'all, some of y'all forgot, man. You know, so we teaching men how, you know, how to be better husbands and better boyfriends, and how to be, you know, just better men overall to make sure their situation is great, make sure their family is airtight, because you know, it's a generation thing going on. Now, especially with our generation, we've seen the changes. We've seen how men are in the household then, and how they are in the household now. I've always wanted to grow in everything I did. I never wanted to be the smartest person in my group. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to, to learn something, even if it's about myself. I, I always had an open mind about being better spiritually and just a person, period. Hey, what's up, everybody? Here I got with me a close friend of mine, that Mike Lowes, that we've been friends for... Shoot, it's been a minute, man, bro. Since the, um, uh, the rec team, basketball. So that was like Dang. middle school for real, I, I believe. Yeah, that was yeah. a while. Yeah. But what it is, he's part of this whole mission of making men masculine again, because one thing that I believe men need to start doing is eating correctly. You know, one thing we need to do is start teaching our kids to eat correctly, because I think we all know how this food is killing us. And if you don't do it, how are you even going to be a man if you're not around long enough to even live? to even talk about it and teach your kids. Um, I have a nonprofit called Man With The Pan. We want to teach them how to cook, you know, nutrition, about what foods are actually, you know, um, nourishing your body and opposed to just putting something in your stomach when you're hungry, you know. We're going to get active, real active come the springtime. Um, hopefully me and Chester set up some programs, um, some youth programs, get these kids uh, occupied in the summer, you know, and make sure that we're actually doing work towards you know, uh, getting ready for the new school year and um, even past that, really. You know, talking about financial literacy, uh, stock market, assets. You know, it's time to get this real education. And really, it's not even hard because it's available, you know. Everybody has what they want to do in life. Everybody has a purpose. And as far as I'm concerned, this is mine. And I need help doing it. And I have people around me that's just willing to offer help out, out of willingness. And it's... It's, it's incredible where it's, it's gone from just where it started a couple months ago. Um, these shirts and all the, I mean, we got everything from socks, sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, t-shirts. We can put it on anything, caps, but it's not about the clothes. It's about bringing awareness. When people see it, they're going to want to ask, what is this about? Tonight, um, what is the next part of Make Men Masculine again? The next part is this year trying to get some some events, play um, workshops mm -hmm. to just I'm gonna go cook out and let's <laughs> go hang out and just enjoy each other as men, you know, just, right. just enjoy each other. I mean, I think that's one thing that's we don't do no more. We don't just hang around just enjoy each other and, right. and talk. 
you don't gotta go to the club and hang out. Just let's let's just play cards, right? You know, stuff like that. And I think that's one thing that's been missing because that's one thing I realized I've been missing. Like I don't get to hang out with a friend as much, and right. I realized how much I've missed it. Mm -hmm. I miss it now. Can't do it no more, man. Right? Shout out, remember you spilled beer on my. <laughs> <laughs> on my CD changer, man. Oh, yep, man. Now I ain't say nothing. He ain't find out for years later. <laughs> he was just wondering why I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he was just wondering why I stopped working. I was like, yeah, you remember two years ago when you said Oh, man, that's I'm still here. He ain't doing on my changer, man.